Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fulman Adventure Club and today we're going to be testing out how long two lithium iron phosphate RV batteries last when they have 5 amps of power draw. The batteries we're going to be using for this test are by Green Life and each one has 100 amp hours. The chemistry in these is lithium iron phosphate because um, it's the safer of the chemistries. I've had these for about two and a half years but at the time this test was done these were brand new. Just want to make sure that that's clear. This is not a test that I'm doing today after I've had them for two and a half years. This test was done right when I got them and I'm just putting it together for you guys now for a battery series that I'm doing. I also have two different videos where I do the exact same test using five amps of draw on two 12 volt deep cycle batteries. And I'll put a card up there for that experiment. And I did another test using the same parameters for two six volt deep cycle batteries in series. Um, so I'll put a card up to that as well so you guys can check out either of those experiments. Now what we're going to do to get that 5 amps of draw in the RV is I put together just a simple little list of common things that you'd probably be running in a normal RV, real low innocuous low power draw items. So what we're going to be doing to get that 5 amps of draw is we're going to be using two LED light bulbs, three incandescent light bulbs, one 12 volt oscillating fan, and my little uh, car stereo there on a moderate volume with the same song on repeat and it does have a pop-up LCD display and that will be open as well and if you put all that stuff together as we can see by the uh, amp meter right here we're going to have five amps pretty darn close to it. So we're going to turn that on set up a time-lapse camera and then see how long these batteries last and just compare the numbers. So what I'm going to do is throw up on the board here next to me uh, all my gauges and one of those is a percentage gauge that comes with a charge controller for my solar kit and that's what I used in the other two tests but when I did this video I'd also installed uh, one of my Xantrax inverters and so now I had a voltage meter display which is great so we're going to be throwing that up there as well um, so you can kind of see what the voltage drop um, which there is none really with lithiums uh, but I'm going to throw all that stuff up on the board and we're going to start the test so what we're going to do is turn on we're, first we're going to unplug the RV from shore power and we're going to disconnect to the solar panels that I have on my roof so we have absolutely no power coming in and then what we're going to do is go ahead and turn on all of those lights the fan and the stereo and get all that stuff running and begin the time-lapse camera and start the clock so what you'll notice about lithium-ion batteries well lithium-iron phosphate batteries uh, in the RV is that they maintain a really high voltage all the way through their power cycle until they're just about dead and then they fall very rapidly. The difference between that and a normal set of batteries um, is that as their voltage starts to drop and they get to 50% their voltage is dropping and as they get lower the voltage continues to drop. So you have lights that are going to be dimmer, fans that are slower, stuff like that. With lithium batteries you don't have any of that power draw. They stayed pretty much at 13 volts this entire experiment and so the lights looked like we were plugged into shore power and the fan was running at full speed. You really couldn't tell that they were getting low at all until they were completely dead. Now with the other tests I went to 50 percent so I could show you how long they lasted and then that's where you'd normally have to charge lead acid batteries back up. But with this one the only way that I could find 50 percent is by letting it run all the way till they were dead and cutting that time in half. Because as you can see here it just says 100 percent on my on my little percentage gauge whereas all the other tests that was dropping the entire experiment. So as I let this run they're eventually gonna suddenly plummet in the voltage and you can see the lights fail and everything else. This happened within about five to ten minutes. I mean it was a really fast just boom nosedive right when they were completely out of energy because those lithium batteries really give you a hundred percent of your power until it's all gone which is a really cool feature that they have. Now at the end of this experiment we ended up with 36 hours almost on the money until they were completely dead and the lights went out. So if you cut that in half we have 18 hours would have been to 50 percent if you want to compare those numbers to my other videos. So at 50 percent about 18 hours and 36 hours to completely dead and uh, with lithium batteries you can do that you can discharge them all the way and then recharge them really fast and that's what they're kind of designed to do. You can get thousands of cycles out of them abusing them all the way dead and all the way back up so that's a great feature about them as well. I did run this test a second time and with the uh, other battery tests with the 212 volts and the 26 volts we saw a significant loss in the second test because I took those batteries all the way down to zero and that damages the cells and so when they recharged up 
we had lost some time because I did a little bit of damage. With the lithium batteries, there's not supposed to be any change really, and that's what the test pretty much showed. On test two, they ran 35 hours and 49 minutes, so we had a, a loss of 11 minutes with the second test. And that could have been due to variables or any number of thing, or that was just the first time these batteries were really used. So they were pretty much spot on. I mean, 35 hours and 50 minutes and 36 hours. So, I mean, right there, they were pretty much identical for all the tests and they've been maintaining that for the last two and a half years that I've had them. They, they're still holding almost all of their charge. I should do a video to show exactly how much and I might do that here soon. But so those are the readings on this test was 36 hours and you can use all of that power, which is very, very cool. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to mention, if you add up the amp hours to see how much power we, we were supposed to get. These are each a 100 amp hour battery. So two of them for a total of 200 amp hours. So if you take 36 hours and multiply that by five amps, you get um, 180 amp hours. And so that's how much power we got out of these batteries um, was 180 amp hours. And basically what that equates to is about 90%. Now the reason for that is these lithium batteries have a battery management system that are gonna keep, gonna keep them from being over discharged and overcharged. It's a little computer inside that tells it, hey, that's enough, cut it off, and hey, that's too much, cut it off. And they're gonna stop at about 10% of their overall capacity and that's gonna increase the longevity of the batteries and also prevent any danger from going all the way down to zero, which can damage the cells and stuff like that. So that's a safety feature basically but we did get to use all 180 amp hours of that power, so that's 90%, as opposed to a lead acid or AGM battery bank uh, where you'd only be able to use 50%. So if you had two lead acid batteries hooked up, each one had 100 amp hours for 200 amp hours, you could only get about 100 amp hours out to 50% and then you'd have to recharge. These you can just take all the way down and uh, recharge. Another benefit to the lithium batteries is gonna be how fast you can recharge them. Lead acid batteries have to have a bulk charge, an absorption charge, and a float charge to really slowly get them topped all the way back up until they're really good and at 100% again. Um, and this, this can take many hours depending on the charger you have, but more than likely six or more to really recharge these uh, from a really low discharge state. And the lithium batteries can take up to 100 amps of charging, which is insane. If you even have a charger that's capable of that, which I do, um, you can fill these batteries up in like two hours in an emergency situation. I usually set mine down lower, you know, just to be easier on the batteries, but they can take it. You can discharge a lot of battery uh, power fast, and you can charge a lot of power fast into these batteries, which is definitely another huge bonus. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video that compares all three of these different sets of batteries that I've tested and tell you the cost breakdown, the pros and cons, and all that kind of stuff soon, uh, now that we have all three of these base tests done. Um, another thing that I will mention is these are Green Life batteries, and when I was uh, basically uh, given these batteries two and a half years ago when I worked for RV4 Seasons in Colorado, um, these batteries were $1,200 a piece which is just so expensive. And that's why a lot of people don't do it and they stick with AGMs or lead acid. But in that time frame, I checked yesterday and I'll put a link down below to Amazon. The price on these now is $800. So I think it's $799. Um, and I was really excited about that, but I wanted to make sure that Green Life didn't change the chemistry of the batteries to something less stable or get rid of the battery management system or cut some kind of corner to drop $400 off these batteries. So I called them and talked to uh, their tech officer and also their, their manager rep there. And they haven't changed the chemistry. So it's still lithium iron phosphate batteries. The battery management system is still the same. So this is still the exact same battery that I purchased. And I just wanted to double check that for you guys before I said, these are working great and they're totally safe and awesome. And I've had them for two and a half years just to find out that maybe they changed something to get the price down. So they're the same battery, but uh, I guess they figured out how to get their manufacturing costs down and they're trying to stay competitive. So now these batteries are $7.99. I'll put that link on Amazon. If you guys do decide you want to go this route, you can use that and that helps me out as well. 
all my Amazon links do. But that about wraps it up for the lithium and I'm gonna really dive into all the different batteries and how they performed and the cost breakdowns and the video coming up in a big battery shootout across the board to really kind of let you know which dual RV battery setup is the best. So please look forward to that. My name is Jim with the Full Moon Adventure Club and until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.